at my NBB presentation. Uh, my name is Michiel, uh, also known as Borg Dude on the internet. Um, and this is London Collegians. So well, uh, thanks for inviting me back uh, virtually. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, to do this. Uh, and thanks for everybody for coming. Uh, so what's NBB? Um, so NBB is a scripting, um, uh, by the way, uh, can you, this bar on the side, you cannot see, right? No, it's all it's, right. Uh, okay, okay, that, that's good. Um, so NBB is a scripting platform for uh, closure on Node.js. And by that, I mean, uh, it is closure interpreted via uh, SCI, which is a closure interpreter, which also powers uh, Babeshka. But SCI uh, is written in such a way that it can be compiled uh, either to JVM bytecode or uh, to JavaScript. Um, and NBB has developed uh, about half a year, uh, since about half a year ago. Uh, and it can be used to script against any library in the Node.js ecosystem. So there is not a, a limitation. Um, like Babeshka, uh, you cannot, in Babeshka, you cannot use any Java library in, in the Java ecosystem, but for NBB, there is not such a limitation, um, including uh, ES6 modules, which I'll, I'll be speaking about later. Um, and like Babeshka, NBB comes with a couple of convenient uh, built-in libraries. Uh, such as uh, Promessa, which is a, a library to deal with promises. Uh, and promises you will uh, encounter a lot in JavaScript and uh, especially in Node.js. Um, and there is a, a library called JS Interop, which uh, eases uh, dealing with JavaScript Interop. Uh, and also Reagent is built in. And you might wonder why is Reagent built in? For a scripting library, that's a little bit weird. I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, so what we see here is uh, if you type npx, npx is a tool to, to launch any uh, npm uh, dependency uh, as a command line thing. Uh, and if you don't have nbb installed, it will install it on demand. So if you type this, then you will be dropped in a, in a REPL and well, so you can start typing expressions. So here we type require and then a child process, which is a built-in Node.js uh, library for launching child processes. Mm -hmm. And here we launch a process. Uh, we just call echo. And here you see the output. And here you see that, that we require one of the built-in uh, closure script uh, libraries. And we get... Uh, like like closure get in we get a series of value uh, a path into a, a data structure uh, which is a javascript data structure so that's an example uh to um let's see how do i escape this thing uh oh yeah so I, I, I can show that uh, NBB starts relatively fast. So if I type NBB minus E plus one to three, you can see that it's, it's pretty fast. So if I do a time, it's, uh, it's a little bit slower now because I'm on Zoom. If I'm not on Zoom, it's uh, about 180 milliseconds. Uh, this is an Intel machine. And if I'm on my... Uh, M1, it's even lower, it's 120 milliseconds or so, uh, which is, I would say, good enough for, uh, for scripting. Um, let's see. So why do we want to look at Node.js? Because I know there's people in the, in the Clojure ecosystem that uh, do not want to have uh, to do anything with Node.js. And I understand that because in the news, you you hear sometimes like, oh, there is this uh, security problem in Node.js. Some lunatic uh, released a library that deletes all the files from your hard disk. Yes, that happens. So um, 
But there's also good parts on Node.js. Uh, the good part is it has fast startup time uh, compared to, uh, let's say, uh, Java. Um, uh, there is a large ecosystem with many useful libraries. Uh, there's also a lot of useless libraries and a lot of bad libraries, but there's also many useful libraries. So the good parts. Um, Node.js lets you write small web apps very quickly. Um, you can use it for browser testing. Um, you can write command line and text user face apps. Um, and cron jobs, uh, AWS cloud functions, you can do build systems with Gulp. Uh, so there's a lot of fun and useful stuff in there, I would say. Uh, but can we do it with ClojureScript? Yes, we can. We, we always have uh, been able to do this using the ClojureScript compiler. Uh, and But if you want to do a one-off ad hoc scripts. Uh, it's not so convenient if you have to make a separate project and then uh, invoke the JavaScript compiler or a close script compiler and then, uh, yeah, iterate like that. You, you basically want some, some lower level of entry sometimes. And uh, so we, we have a couple of options there. Um, so Plank is one of those options, which is self-hosted ClojureScript, which means that the ClojureScript compiler uh, is still available within the JavaScript eco uh, environment. Um, so it can compile scripts on the fly, which is very neat. Uh, and it runs on JS Core, which is the same engine that, that powers uh, Safari, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if that's in, uh, still valid, but uh, it, it's a thing from the Mac OS ecosystem uh, developed by Apple, I think. Uh, and, but the startup uh, of Plank is, uh, well, not so great as some other options. Uh, let's see. So it's it takes on my machine here with Zoom uh, going on. It's, it's a little bit slower than usual, but so I'm, I'm now six, 600 milliseconds, um, which is still okay, but not, not the greatest. Uh, uh, and there is maybe, maybe, yeah, so there is no uh, NPM integration. So you, it's, a it's a little bit hard to use other JavaScript uh, dependencies in Plank, but it has a, couple of useful things built in and it's I, I use it a lot for to test just uh, like what would the closure script compiler do in this case then I check plank and I type some expressions and uh, that's how I usually use uh, plank to to validate what uh, my my hypothesis about closure script um, and it's still maintained by uh, Mike Fikes Mike Fikes is the author um, so the other uh, option that was available a few years ago, uh, it's still available. It, it's called Lumo. Uh, it's also self-hosted closure script and it runs on Node.js. Uh, it has pretty great startup time. Uh, let me also try that live. Uh, Lumo plus one to three time. Okay, but it's almost half a second. The, sec the second time it was a little bit faster. Uh, 300 millis milliseconds. Um, and, but uh, the drawback of, of Lumo is that it's no longer maintained. Uh, so An Antonio Montero was, uh, was, was the author and he, uh, he moved on to OCaml basically. And uh, he's yeah, doing that now. And there, there wasn't someone who stepped in and said, I want to maintain Lumo. Uh, one, one drawback maybe of, of Lumo was that it bundled its own version of Node, which is uh, currently 11. So if you, if you do Node version, I, I'm running 14 here, or I can also do use 17. And then I'm, I'm using 17. 
But if you do Lumo like this, and then you do process version, I think, no, what was it again? JS process version, like this, I think. Yeah, so you see it's it's version 11. So it doesn't use, uh, it doesn't use the, the system uh, Node.js version. Uh, and another, uh, because it's a little bit older, it doesn't support ES6 modules. And some libraries only come as uh, ES6 modules now, because that's a trend in the JavaScript ecosystem that uh, before there were uh, common JS modules in, in Node.js, and those are still the main thing. But slowly but surely, everyone is moving to ES6 because that's a standard in the, in the whole JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, and some libraries are available both as CommonJS and, and ES6. But some libraries now decide, well, we're only doing ES6 now. And if you don't support it, it's on you. Uh, so that's where those libraries do not work in, in Lumo anymore. Uh, so that's where maybe NBB comes in. Uh, it's interpreted closure script on Node.js, so not self-hosted, uh, which means it's not the official closure as uh, brought forward by Cognitect. It's not, uh, in that sense, not official closure, uh, but it's, uh, so it's interpreted closure script, uh, the same interpreter that uh, powers Babeshka is also used in NBB. And it supports a large uh, subset of closure. Uh, a few things it doesn't support. And uh, yeah, maybe over time, I will be able to support more of that in NBB because JavaScript is a more dynamic environment uh, than, than Java. In Java, I cannot, let's say, fake that I am of a certain type or something. You cannot say, I want to create an object and it must fulfill these interfaces dynamically. dynamically. But in JavaScript, it's much easier to do, to do that kind of stuff. So maybe over time, I will be able to support the, uh, more, more of Clojure uh, in, in NBB. But so far, I think the parts that, are, that you usually use for scripting are covered, I would say. Uh, so that's uh, functions, macros, all the data structures, uh, protocols, and multi-methods are all, all supported. Um, uh, so the only thing that isn't supported is uh, dev type. And yeah, that, that's the main thing, basically. So uh, startup time, NBB, yeah, I already showed it. It was like uh, 250 now because I'm using Zoom. It's a little bit slower. But normally it's around in this uh, ballpark. Uh, I just uh, buy, bought an M1 uh, MacBook Air and it was 120 on, on that machine. So that's why I wrote it down there. That the, was the best time I could produce. Um, the startup time could be made faster even if you reduce uh, or if you elide all the doc strings from the from the compiled JavaScript, uh, because NBB consists of a couple of uh, advanced compiled uh, files, uh, and but they could be made smaller if you elide all the metadata and doc strings, etc. And this might be yeah necessary or not, might be nice for AWS Lambda, for example, where every millisecond basically matters for your uh, wallet. Uh, but so far, I haven't done that. Uh, it uses any Node.js version from your system. Uh, I can show that uh, to prove it. Uh, clear NBB, and then we do JS process version. So it even has auto completion. So I just pressed tab twice. And here you see it's using version 17. 17. Uh, it supports ES6 modules uh, and it's currently actively maintained and developed. 
there is also a small community around this on Clojure in Slack uh, in the NBB uh, channel. Uh, and it's just a lot of fun to hang out there and see what we can do with this new uh, environment. So uh, what kind of use cases uh, do I see where NBB would, uh, would be good to use? Command line apps, uh, text UI apps, small web applications, uh, UI testing, AWS, learning closure, uh, and so and basically anything Node.js but using closure. Uh, I will show a small example of each one of those. So here we have an example of a text UI uh, program uh, using Ink. And Ink is a uh, NPM or JavaScript. Yeah, I think it's a Node uh, library for writing rea uh, no, re React uh, text UIs. Uh, so what we do here is we, re we require this library and that's why Reagent is bundled with uh, NBB. So we can use it to, to uh, write nice text UI programs. So here you see hello world one, and that's because we render here hello world. And then we have some state where, where this number one comes from. Um, so yeah, you can do that with NBB. Uh, so yeah, ad hoc scripting. What I call ad hoc, I just mean, oh, I have a thought, I want to do something, I can grab this tool and I can write a script and Im immediately execute it without thinking too much about it. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, this is an example where we use node iCal uh, and uh, to, to convert an iCal file to, to close your script. So, so if you can find any good library for, for on node for such a thing, then NBB might be a good tool to, to try out. Um, here you see some uh, dollar sign with default and then dot sync. I will explain where, the, where this comes from later in the presentation. Um, so small, small web applications, uh, there is a framework called Sidefox, uh, which supports NBB. Uh, so you can use it to compile to shadow sales.js or you can use it to compile to, uh, or not compile, but just run it straight away with NBB. And so uh, how that works is it uses Express. Uh, it it, 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 it uh, offers a couple of convenient functions around Express, which is the not built in, but the most one of the most popular node uh, web uh, solutions. So this is this is the the all the code that's needed to to get a first uh, web application going, uh, and even supports reloading. So if you would um, edit the script and then refresh it in the browser, then it would immediately immediately work. Uh, so. UI tests. Um, so there is one library called Playwright, which you can use on Node.js to, to write tests. And uh, I've done that uh, in a couple of uh, projects. And one project is Clerk from Next Journal, which is a notebook uh, solution. And to test if, if the notebooks render correctly. I wrote a few tests to, to visit every page and to inspect if there are no errors in the console. So very basic. Uh, I actually have this uh, in a terminal here. So the, the tests are in this file. So we require playwright. Can you see it? Is it big enough? Yeah, uh, and then we require a closure test, which is also available in NBB. And so we have some boilerplate to, uh, we set up some fixtures and launch a browser and stuff like that. And 
then what basically happens is I visit the first page and then I run over uh, all, a series of links and in every uh, in every uh, oh yeah so you can register some callback uh, on every page uh, to see if there is not uh, if there is an error it will call this callback and what we do here is we fill uh, an atom with the uh, these errors and at the end I verify if if there are zero errors in the console so um, uh, because this code is all asynchronous because yeah node uh, libraries are usually asynchronous and because it gets very awkward if you have to do it all manually this async code there is a library included called uh, promessa promessa.core and you can write uh, promessa let and then it's as if you're writing synchronous code but this is all asynchronous uh, so so you open a new page uh, so this is actually when you would uh, evaluate this in the REPL you would get back a promise but here this is the result of of that promise and then you can continue the next step and the next step uh, so it's very convenient it it offers like uh, uh, analog functions from closure core functions and macros to deal to deal with promises so uh, maybe I can show that it also works uh, let's see NBB, let's see what I did. Yeah, so I'm launching it. Uh, you can see it launches a browser. So it, it goes to the first page, it fetches the links, and then it runs over all these notebooks. And then at the end, you see, oh, there are zero errors, and that, that's it. So uh, that's UI tests. Um, Oh, yeah. Some uh, nice example uh, is a blog post where somebody used NBB to write a couple of AWS Lambda functions to write an analytics solution for his blog. Uh, so every time you visit the blog, then a counter in a, in a DynamoDB database is updated. And he also made a Lambda to render uh, the the counts from the database in a nice graph using uh, Vega light. Um, and this runs on AWS Lambda and it's very cheap. If you don't have uh, high traffic, like not in the millions, then it's usually uh, free too. So, uh, and because NVB has uh, good startup time. Uh, so if you run the Lambda on an ARM 64 Lambda with 128 gig, uh, mega, megabytes memory. Then the startup is, the cold start is maybe 400 milliseconds or so. And once it started, it, it's even faster. It's maybe 100 milliseconds or so. So it's, it's pretty good, uh, especially for, for these kinds of, uh, personal projects, I would say it's not so high risk to to use uh, NBB for this. Uh, so uh, yeah, learning closure. Uh, so uh, there is a project a website called Exorcism, where you can uh, do closure exercises and also for other languages, but there is a closure track. Uh, and because these exercises are ran against uh, yeah, virtual uh, environments that usually start from uh, yeah, a, a cold state. Uh, they had some problems getting this fast enough, especially for the, I think for the closure script environment because they had to compile things or, um, and they decided to use Babeshka for the JVM solutions and NBB for uh, for the closure script solutions. So that's also where these kind of tools might be 
nice to use. Uh, so when I started developing NBB, I got some questions like, uh, does it replace uh, Babeshka in some way? Or uh, what is, are you going to, to spend less time? Are you afraid that Babeshka uh, will go away or something? Uh, my answer is no to all of this. Uh, so uh, Babeshka has a different use case. It's um, Babeshka is more focused at replacing Bash scripts and it has a very fast startup time and it's more familiar as well to uh, JVM programmers. Uh, it has a task uh, like a make file replacement, a ta task runner, etc. And th that's what NBB doesn't have. NBB is just you want to use some node library and do it via closure. Uh, that's basically, so I see it as complementary. And moreover, uh, NBB and Babeshka share the same code base, more or less. So it, they are both based on SCI. Uh, so every improvement that goes in there benefits both of these projects. Uh, and where I would use NBB over Babeshka is, yeah, if you would, questions like, I want to parse an Excel sheet or an iCal file, or uh, and Babeshka doesn't support this, but I still want to have some fast scripting startup time experience, then, then NBB might do the trick. Um, so to, yeah, to show a little bit where this sits in, in the ecosystem. Uh, so the projects uh, that are using Psy, some of the projects that are using Psy, so NBB is one of them, Babeshka is one of them, but it's also used in uh, JET, which is a small command line tool. It's used in CLD Condo to implement uh, hooks where people can write hooks for their uh, macros. Uh, it's used in Clerk in the front end uh, viewer. Uh, it's used in Skittle, which is a uh, uh, yeah a tool that you can use in the browser to evaluate closure script in script tags directly. Uh, it's used in OBB, which is a macOS uh, scripting environment for OSA scripts. Uh, so, so everything, every improvement that goes into Psy will benefit one or more of these other projects. Uh, and while developing NBB, I've made a lot of improvements in the JavaScript interop side of things. So that also benefited Skittle and, and OBB, for example, and uh, yeah, what, what Clerk is doing, for example. So there is a um, synergetic effect, I would say. Um, so back to NBB. Uh, so Mac, uh, in NBB, you can just write macros without uh, compromise. So there is not uh, a necessity to, to put them in a closure file or uh, write, uh, write uh, require macros or, or something. So you can just like closure, put macros everywhere and they will work as expected. Um, so this was a macro that I wrote uh, initially in NBB to deal with promises. It's basic, yeah, it's kind of like a, it's it's like the the promessa let macro that I showed earlier, but you can do this in your in user space if you want. So if you use this macro then, yeah, and you deal with code like this, launch puppeteer, then do this and then do this, you can use it your own macro to, to make it look like this. Uh, but as I said, that's not necessary anymore, but it's just an example of a macro. Uh, and just to, to emphasize that macros are fully supported. Uh, so Promessa, I already explained a little, little bit. Um, there, it's just a very convenient library to, to deal with promises. So if you, uh, here is an example. Uh, so here we write a function called uh, do stuff. Uh, first we write uh, hello, we print hello, and then we wait for one second, and then we print 
pi and then we return 16. So, uh, so this function is asynchronous because it uh, returns a promise. Uh, and well, so if you evaluate this uh, do stuff in, in the REPL, then you get back a promise. Uh, but if you use plet again, then, and you say do stuff and bind it to X, then X is really the value 16 here. And it takes one second before X takes on the value 16. And, but you don't have to use promises on the right-hand side. You can also just use any other thing. So here we increment X uh, and then Y is 17. Then we wait for a second again. And then we print something and then we return Y. So if you evaluate this thing in the REPL, it, again, it's, it's a promise, uh, but there is one special function in NBB, which is uh, designed to work in the REPL, which lets you uh, block on promise results. And that's called await. I can show that maybe in the REPL. Uh, so I have a, already a REPL here. Uh, this is uh, Calva, which has good support for uh, NBB. So maybe uh, I can, yeah. So if you are in, in Calva, you can do a start project REPL and connect, also known as jack in. And here you can say, I want to jack in with NBB. That's built into uh, Calva already. So here I have a REPL. I evaluate this namespace. Um, and then uh, you can see autocomplete is also working. Uh, but I was here to demonstrate something about Promessa. So Promessa.core. So we, we uh, required it. Now we can do, uh, let's say, p do p delay. thousands and then we return hello so if i evaluate this then it's promise and you don't ever see hello because that's the resolved value of this promise uh, but there is one special experimental <laughs> just added thing in nbb which is called await it's in nbb core and it's i would say it use it only in the REPL. Uh, because, yeah, there's not really a reason to, to use it in other situations, I would say, because Promessa provides enough to, to do this. But if you now evaluate this, then we will wait for a second and then hello is returned. So that's just to, to add a little bit convenience about exploring asynchronous code in NBB. Back to the presentation. Um, so yeah, there is a built-in NREPL uh, server. Uh, so if you type N npx nbb, then nbb installs itself, but this NREPL is included with that. There's, there's nothing else you have to do there. Um, and you can start it manually, like nbb NREPL server port 1337. Uh, let me let me do that uh, and then show how I, how you can connect from Emacs. Um, so let me oh yeah here project so nbb and REPL server port one three three eight. I'm just making that up uh, and let me start Emacs. That takes a while. <laughs> because never quit Emacs because it takes too long to start. Um, as you can see, my Emacs config has gotten too big. Uh, now I go into the project and I make the font a little bit bigger. So what you can do now is CIDR connect localhost and then port 1338, which is what I'm typing. So you can see I, I get a REPL here. But if I try to evaluate, nothing happens. That's because CIDR doesn't expect that an 
NREPL server uh, is made in JavaScript. And so it kind of always assumes JVM environment. Uh, for some reason, if I go into closure mode instead of closure script mode, then it suddenly works. So that's that's the current workaround. Uh, I know that Bajidar is aware of this and there will be a solution eventually, but currently it's it's doable if you know this, this workaround. So I can do the same thing that we did in Calva and, and evaluate this and that, that just works the same. Also, uh, let's see, also autocomplete should work here, but for some reason, now it doesn't, I'm not. It's a small demo problem, I, I think. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's normally it should. I think here it, it did work. So not sure what's going on there. But um, OK, so that's about NREPL. So uh, the initial implementation was done uh, as a standalone project to be able to inspect the state of node programs. Uh, I took that implementation and uh, incorporated that in, into an uh, NBB. Actually, this was one of the inspirations to start NBB. Uh, so thank you, VST. Um, OK, so completions, we already saw that. Uh, Okay, so there's also a console REPL, of course. So if you type npx nbb, it starts the REPL. Uh, and one cool feature, it's kind of an implementation detail is um, when you, uh, let me show that. So when you um, type, nor yeah, if you type range, normally you're stuck, right, in a REPL and then you have to start over because range never terminates and yeah, that's shit. Now we have to, to end the REPL. But if I press Control C, we're back into the REPL. Uh, and this is because uh, every, uh, every uh, expression is evaluated in a virtual node, virtual machine, which can be killed. And then uh, you're back uh, where, you, where you were. Uh, before that's kind of neat uh, so creating virtual machines is very cheap in in uh, node.js something that i learned along the way uh, so this doesn't work yet in the nrepl server but uh, it's it's not too hard to port this this trick uh, to to there as well so um yeah maybe if someone wants to work on this that that might be a nice uh, thing. Um, OK, about the uh, ECMAScript 6 libraries. Um, so ECMAScript uh, modules is a trend in, in the JavaScript ecosystem. Uh, and as, uh, some libraries uh, are available as common JS libraries, which was a format that Node.js invented. And some libraries uh, support both CommonJS and ECMAScript because ECMAScript is now a standard, uh, which is slowly but surely, uh, yeah, becoming the default, I would say, in, in the closure, uh, not closure, in the JavaScript ecosystem. Some people don't like this, but I think, that's what the trend is. Um, and because it's the trend and some libraries only are available as ECMAScript modules, I think that uh, NBB should support those um, because else we're missing out on some good libraries. So, so there is a library uh, which is called Execa, which is a library to launch processes. Um, and so if you try to, to use that library in, for example, a node REPL, closure script node REPL, then it says uh, require of ES6 modules is not supported because closure script compiles this into a, a, a node require. 
So Execa doesn't support it because Execa is an EX, ES6 module. Yeah, doesn't work. So if you use the standard node compilation target of ClojureScript, you can no longer use these modern libraries. Um, and yeah, also not supported in Lumo, as I said in the beginning, because Lumo is using a very old version of Node. Um, in NBB, you can use uh, these modern libraries. Um, so here we, we uh, yeah, this is an example that it works. So, so we use Execa and we say refer Execa. Uh, and then we use this library and print something. Well, it works, okay. Um, so, ha yeah. Uh, some convention, I will explain how this was implemented after this sheet. So some conventions, uh, if you're using a JavaScript library, you always have to use a string and then an alias or refer. Uh, that's a convention that, uh, well, this is standard ClojureScript. It's supported by ClojureScript, but it's a in Shadow Sales, yes, you can only use strings, but in the official ClojureScript, you can also use a symbol here, and then it will still search for the N NPM library. Uh, but Shadow Sales, yes, said, well, it's pretty handy to statically see if some something is a JavaScript library or not. So always use a string. Uh, and this is actually also what Sylvia Kondo uses to see if you're using a JavaScript library or a ClojureScript library. So, and this is the same convention that NBB has uh, taken over. So always use a string. Uh, here we see something weird, which is uh, the name of a library and then a dollar and then default. Um, why? Why do you have to do this for some libraries? That's because uh, the require is impl implemented using dynamic import in NBB. And if you dynamically import uh, ASCII doctor, you will get some kind of uh, object which has one default property. And that's the, the main function of that library that you want to be using. Um, they call it default exports in, in ECMAScript. And this dollar sign is a way to go into this uh, module and then get a property out of that and give it a name. Uh, this dollar sign convention is, by the way, also not something that NBB invented. Uh, it's it, it's a syntax that closes script supports, uh, and NBB su supports it as well. Um, so. But because require is implemented using dynamic import and dynamic import is asynchronous. So that actually means that this whole namespace uh, form must be evaluated asynchronous. But it seems like we're, uh, we don't have to do anything with promises here, right? So there is a special evaluation in NBB for namespace forms and require forms. Um, so uh, NBB is built on the closest uh, on on Psi, uh, but Psi only has a synchronous API. But in NBB, I want to do an async asynchronous evaluation. Uh, so that's implemented as follows. If an expression matches NS something, then every re require clause is uh, evaluated manually. So we just uh, deal with the namespace form ourselves and we don't use Psi for this uh, directly. And if it's a string li library name, then we asynchronously call JS import. Uh, and for some built-in namespaces, we load a JavaScript file uh, lazily for better startup time. So if you're not using, for example, Reagent or Promessa, you don't pay the startup time for that. Um, 
and then we patch the Psi version of required to use this asynchronous variant wrapped in NBB core await. Um, and every other expression is evaluated normally using Psi. So there is a kind of a special top level way of dealing with these uh, require and NS forms. And all top level expressions are now evaluated as chain promise. So um, some more about uh, ECMAScript. So uh, I kind of already explained this, but you can do this manually in, in the NBB REPL. You can say NBB core await JS import FS. And that's, that's basically the object that you get back. So this is kind of what happens under the hood. Uh, and about the syntax. So if, if, uh, if a JavaScript library writes export default, blah, 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 then you can import it in NBB as library dollar default s something. And if a JavaScript library writes export foo, then you can import it like uh, library dollar foo. So that's, that's how that corresponds to each other. Um, well, if, you're, if you support loading ECMAScript 6 modules, then that means that you, you, your project also becomes an ECMAScript 6 module because you cannot say, I am a common JS project, but I want to require an ES6 module. That doesn't play well with each other. Uh, so that means that NBB itself is an ECMAScript 6 library. Uh, but the regular closure script compiler does not support this. Luckily, Shadow SailJS uh, supports target ECMAScript. Um, and this is the configuration for it. Um, and I'm very grateful to Thomas Heller, who, yeah, who explained a lot to me about how this worked and uh, that has build tool supports this. And if you want to use NBB from another JavaScript project, you can do that as follows. You can say import and then load file, for example, from NBB um, because it exports these functions over here, which is not very readable, but you have to believe me. <laughs> um, so there is a JavaScript API. If you want to work, for example, if you want to make an AWS Lambda function, it kind of look, looks like this. Uh, you have an, a wrapper JavaScript file, uh, which the, the, the environment of Lambda expects. And from there you can call NBB. So you can say uh, import load file from NBB and then load file example sales.js await because it's asynchronous and that exports some function and then we export that function again. Uh, and here you can see the, the closure script or NBB side of things. So this is basically all the code that you have to write on uh, to, to write an AWS Lambda function. Uh, well, some miscellaneous things you can uh, publish your project as an NPM library. So you can say NBB, NPX and NBB project. Uh, and it's also possible to package your project as a standalone executable using some tool called uh, CAXA. Um, there, there are already a couple of these NPX, uh, NPXable things available that have been made with uh, NBB and one of them is called closure quiz, NPX closure quiz. Uh, or, uh, if you haven't installed it yet, uh, it and NPX asks you, uh, do you want to install it? And I say, okay. And um, yeah, okay, there it comes. So it says, do you want to, who wants to be a closure millionaire? <laughs> 
uh, what is your name? Well, Michiel. Oh, I made a typo, but okay. So you can say it's a pretty nice uh, text UI program. So when was Closure released? 2007. Okay, and who designed who designed it? Richiki. And what's is what is not a file extension for Closure ENS? And uh, what what is not a platform to run Closure? I think it was this one. And now I, I'm a closure millionaire. So that's a fun uh, project that's available on NPM. You can run it with NPX closure quiz and it uses NBB. Uh, let's see, I'm almost done. Uh, so in the future, um, yeah, I'm thinking about how should we load closure script, other closure script uh, libraries, because that is possible, but maybe you don't want to to use closure jars or uh, I don't know, maybe some people in, in the Node ecosystem don't want to install Java or whatever. So can we maybe use NPM for that or not? That's something I'm thinking about. I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure about this, but uh, hammock time. Uh, performance improvements in Sci. I, I want to be working on. Uh, and there's lots of, small things that can be improved and i'm happy to see your contributions there as well and yeah so node.js is one javascript scripting uh server server side tool but dino is another one uh, which is pretty new and not so well known yet so there's not a huge ecosystem around this yet but if it catches on there, it's not a huge amount of work to make something like NBB for Dino, which might be called DBB. Uh, so I hope I convinced you a little bit that NBB and Node.js can be quite fun and useful to work with, and that ClojureScript uh, has a good place in the, in the Node.js ecosystem as well. Uh, and I want to thank all these people who, who especially in the beginning of the project, uh, helped me. Uh, Thomas Heller with Shadow JS and a, a lot of other folks. I won't read this list, but I thought it was, was nice to call out a few people. I hope I am not offending anyone that I forgot. So if I forgot you, then you are one of the many others. <laughs> um, uh, it's always... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So there is uh, an NBB Slack channel on Clojurians uh, where we hang out and it's all pretty new. So it might be fun to, to join a pretty new project and to, to get involved a little bit. Uh, I have to thank my sponsors because uh, you, yeah, thanks to my sponsors, uh, that are sponsoring me either uh, via GitHub or op Open Collective or via Closure is Together. I can spend uh, significant, significantly more time on this than I could before. Um, uh, so if you want to sponsor me because you're using one of my projects, uh, that means a lot to me. Uh, so just want to say thanks to everybody uh, and also thanks to you all for coming and listening to me blabber about uh, NBB for an hour. <laughs> Thank you.